Thanks for taking the time to watch my video about the first of 12 uh, Brave New World paintings I did in 2018. This first one is titled Prelude, Once Upon a Time in the American Southwest, The Untold Story. I am Ian Young, the artist of Kansas City. I'll give thanks to everyone who made this series possible at the end of the video, though I'd like to point out now that the series was sold to repeat collector Fred Whitehead through the Jones Gallery of Kansas City, Missouri. The series, of course, was done on the 1932 dystopian novel by Aldous Huxley about the future of mankind and how the government will run everything in what appears to be a paradise, but really isn't. It's often considered one of the top 10 important novels of the 20th century, and it is a weird, weird book. Except for physical violence, most of the subject matters we consider taboo as a society, even more so when the novel was written, appear somewhere in the text. There is no murder or war or poverty or violence like a lot of the popular novels of the 20th century. There's a little violence, but it doesn't show up until later. But subject matter like scientific dictatorships, uh, test tube babies, the discarding of the nuclear family, the celebration of atheism, mandatory promiscuous sex, rampant legal drug addiction, a case system, uh, the stigmatization of education and the destruction of the environment are some of the disturbing themes that reappear over and over in the book. Near the end of the novel, the antagonist sets down the protagonist and explains that at some point between now and what would be the year 2540 AD, mankind decided that there's uh, nothing new under the sun except that which can bring unhappiness and decided to stop evolving as a species for all of eternity. Like the endlessly repeating assembly line of Henry Ford, who is actually the figure that replaces Jesus in the next time scale, I mentioned earlier the year was 2540 AD, but they refer to it as 632 AF. Um, AF stands for after Ford. I definitely think the main portent of the book is that um, in the future, worshiping happiness is going to take priority over everything else. And anyone who disagrees or challenges that notion will be seen as a criminal. The book has required college reading for lots of students, though it's been banned by many schools too, usually for too much sexual content. This first painting, Prelude, is just that. It depicts a scene um, where character Linda Lysenko has been abandoned in the Southwest and is pregnant with John the Savage, though it's just a flashback in the book. Um, this doesn't actually get described in real time, but it is hugely important to the story um, that it was represented in the series. Here she is in the foreground. She winds up actually carrying John all the way to term on the reservation, which is one of the very few places on the planet where it's still legal uh, for her to do so. This is a tragic painting because she's lost on the drugs she depends on for happiness back in civilization. She's in the desert alone. She's been abandoned by the director who took holiday with her there, and uh, she's pregnant, which is illegal. It also uh, takes about 25, 30 years before she's found, definitely until John is a full-grown adult. The lighthouse that appears up here is a bit of foreshadowing to the end of the novel and the final painting. Um, this globe-like cylinder here represents civilization, and um, London, England is where the bulk of the story takes place, and civilization is represented in, in London. Um, there's an island up here, which will make more sense later on. I did invoke a demonic-looking spirit here in the center. They don't know of such strange and, and supernatural phenomenon, um, be it demonic gods, Native American gods, or Christian gods in the Brave New World. Um, all of those sorts of things are discouraged there. The only reason that Linda and um, you know Thomas, the director who brought her there, um, the only reason they were allowed to go there in the first place is he was a director who's basically a senator or a person in power 
so he was granted special permission. Technically, the part of the Southwest they are in is Elmel Pei, and there actually is an Elmel Pei National Monument that I personally visited the same year I did the book. It's in western New Mexico, and it's pretty spectacular. I do need to confess, though, I did take an artistic liberty in this piece, actually several in the series, which I'll shamelessly confess to as I get to them. Uh, the thing about Elmel Pei, even though it's very close to Arizona, it doesn't technically have any saguaro cacti or Joshua trees, uh, which I did include in the piece. You have to be further west in Arizona before you start seeing those. Those are two very, very iconic plants to the American Southwest, though. And unless you live in the U.S. or are familiar with botany, you probably wouldn't know that. Also, with it being 2540, um, and there was a Third World War overpopulation in the mid to late 21st century, um, according to Huxley, um, and the government destroyed a lot of national monuments afterwards and discourages nature for the next 400 years, it's not too much of a stretch to you know, put this stuff here. Who's to say that these plants won't be in this particular region um, by the year you know, 2540? Linda is screaming for help here, uh, for someone to rescue her and take her back to the Brave New World, which does happen later on in the novel and really takes us into the story at that point. This rocket of sorts represent um, Thomas Graham Bale, the character who leaves her there. He didn't do it intentionally. They lost their way in the desert. They ran low on, on drug rations and um, it just happened. Um, but I'll explain that a lot more in the later videos and the later pieces. I'd like to close this opening video with a few points on the series as a whole. All 12 paintings were acrylic on panel. No computers or mixed media was used whatsoever in their creation, except for reference. It took me about two, three weeks to come up with the blueprints for the 12 paintings. A lot of artists call their uh, <clears throat> preliminary work sketches. I think blueprints with the amount of perspective and, and architecture that went into these would be a more appropriate word. Um, all 12 were signed in the year <clears throat> 2018. One per month. Uh, this first one was January. This second one was February and so on and so forth. I wrote three paragraph descriptions for each one on my website ianyoungfineart.com which I highly encourage everyone who wants to familiarize themselves with the novel to log on to and read. I also was helped immensely, uh, tremendously, by the excellent, excellent 1980 film adaptation directed by Burt Brinkenhoff, um, starring Ron Superfly O'Neill as Mustafa Mond and uh, counterculture icon Bern, um, Bud Court as Bernard Marx. Um, I was also helped immensely by the audiobook versions, uh, the free ones online. Those were huge. <clears throat> I also want to thank collector Fred Whitehead, a repeat art collector of mine, for encouraging me to attempt the series and ultimately buying it from me. I cannot stress how much uh, his influence has helped me over the years and how proud I am of this series. I want to thank David Jones of the Jones Gallery in Kansas City for introducing us and giving me my first ever real shot at a real art gallery and also for closing my first gallery sale also to Fred, which happened back in um, September of 2012. I want to thank my girlfriend Kristen for always being by my side and supporting me. I want to thank my dad for teaching me how to paint and critiquing these paintings until I was satisfied with them. Uh, I want to thank my immediate family, my mom, my brother, sister-in-law, close friends, printers, image specialists, past collectors, gallery owners, other artists, however you may have contributed, big or small, um, and however long I may have been in contact with you. Um, without all of you, there's no possible way I, I, could, have, I could have done this and, and, and seen this through today. Um, so thanks for watching, and um, stay tuned for the second video which will be shorter, I promise, uh, regarding painting number two, Central Hatcheries Unit, Henry Foster's Nursery, where the human beings are grown. Thanks for watching.